Foundations of Statistics is the usual name for the epistemological debate in statistics over how one should conduct inductive inference from data. Among the issues considered in statistical inference are the question of Bayesian inference versus frequentist inference. The distinction between Fisher's significance testing and Neyman Pearson hypothesis testing, and whether the likelihood principle should be followed. Some of these issues have been debated for up to 200 years without resolution. Bandia Padier and Forster describe four statistical paradigms classical statistics or error statistics, Bayesian statistics, likelihood based statistics and the Akaikin information criterion-based statistics. Savage's text Foundations of Statistics has been cited over 12,000 times on Google Scholar. It tells the following, It is unanimously agreed that statistics depend somehow on probability. But, as to what probability is and how it is connected with statistics, there has seldom been such complete disagreement and breakdown of communication since the Tower of Babel. Doubtless, much of the disagreement is merely terminological and would disappear under sufficiently sharp analysis. Fisher's significance testing versus Neyman Pearson hypothesis testing in the development of classical statistics in the second quarter of the 20th century two competing models of inductive statistical testing were developed. Their relative merits were hotly debated until Fisher's death. While the hybrid of the two methods is widely taught and used, the philosophical questions raised in the debate have not been resolved. Significance testing Fisher popularized significance testing, primarily in two popular and highly influential books. Fisher's writing style in these books was strong on examples and relatively weak on explanations. The books lacked proofs or derivations of significance test statistics. Fish's more explanatory and philosophical writing was written much later. There appear to be some differences between his earlier practices and his later opinions. Fisher was motivated to obtain scientific experimental results without the explicit influence of prior opinion. The significance test is a probabilistic version of Modis Tollens, a classic form of deductive inference. The significance test might be simplistically stated, if the evidence is sufficiently discordant with the hypothesis, reject the hypothesis. In application, a statistic is calculated from the experimental data. A probability of exceeding that statistic is determined and the probability is compared to a threshold. The threshold is arbitrary. A common application of the method is deciding whether a treatment has a reportable effect based on a comparative experiment. Statistical significance is a measure of probability not practical importance. It can be regarded as a requirement placed on statistical. The method is based on the assumed existence of an imaginary infinite population corresponding to the null hypothesis. The significance test requires only one hypothesis. The result of the test is to reject the hypothesis, a simple dichotomy. The test does not distinguish between truth of the hypothesis and insufficiency of evidence to disprove it. Hypothesis testing Neyman and Pearson collaborated on a different, but related, problem, selecting among competing hypotheses based on the experimental evidence alone. Of their joint papers the most cited was from 1933. The famous result of that paper is the Neyman-Pearson lemma. The lemma says that a ratio of probabilities is an excellent criterion for selecting a hypothesis. The paper proved an optimality of students' t-test. Neyman expressed the opinion that hypothesis testing was a generalization of an, an improvement on significance testing. The rationale for their methods is found in their joint papers. Hypothesis testing requires multiple hypotheses. A hypothesis is always selected, a multiple choice. A lack of evidence is not an immediate consideration. The method is based on the assumption of a repeated sampling of the same population. Grounds of disagreement The length of the dispute allowed the debate of a wide range of issues regarded as foundational to statistics. In this exchange Fisher also discussed the requirements for inductive inference, with specific criticism of cost functions penalizing faulty judgments. 
name and countered that Gauss and Laplace used them. This exchange of arguments occurred 15 years after textbooks began teaching a hybrid theory of statistical testing. Fisher and Neyman were in disagreement about the foundations of statistics, the interpretation of probability the disagreement over Fisher's inductive reasoning versus Neyman's inductive behavior contained elements of the Bayesian frequentist divide. Fisher was willing to alter his opinion on the basis of a calculated probability while Neyman was more willing to change his observable behavior on the basis of a computed cost. The proper formulation of scientific questions with special concern for modeling, whether it is reasonable to reject a hypothesis based on a low probability without knowing the probability of an alternative, whether a hypothesis could ever be accepted on the basis of data in mathematics, deduction proves. Counterexamples disprove in the Popperian philosophy of science, advancements are made when theories are disproven. Subjectivity while Fisher and Neyman struggled to minimize subjectivity, both acknowledged the importance of good judgment. Each accused the other of subjectivity. Fisher subjectively chose the null hypothesis. Neyman Pearson subjectively chose the criterion for selection. Both subjectively determined numeric thresholds. Fisher and Neyman were separated by attitudes and perhaps language. Fisher was a scientist and an intuitive mathematician. Inductive reasoning was natural. Neyman was a rigorous mathematician. He was convinced by deductive reasoning rather by a probability calculation based on an experiment. Thus there was an underlying clash between applied and theoretical, between science and mathematics. Related history Neyman, who had occupied the same building in England as Fisher, accepted a position on the west coast of the United States of America in 1938. His move effectively ended his collaboration with Pearson and the development of hypothesis testing. Further development was continued by others. Textbooks provided a hybrid version of significance and hypothesis testing by 1940. None of the principals had any known personal involvement in the further development of the hybrid taught in introductory statistics today. Statistics later developed in different directions including decision theory, Bayesian statistics, exploratory data analysis, robust statistics and non-parametric statistics. Neyman Pearson hypothesis testing contributed strongly to decision theory which is very heavily used. Hypothesis testing readily generalized to accept prior probabilities which gave it a Bayesian flavor. Neyman Pearson hypothesis testing has become an abstract mathematical subject taught in postgraduate statistics. While most of what is taught to undergraduates and used under the banner of hypothesis testing is from Fisher, Contemporary opinion No major battles between the two classical schools of testing have erupted for decades but sniping continues. After generations of dispute, there is virtually no chance that either statistical testing theory will replace the other in the foreseeable future. The hybrid of the two competing schools of testing can be viewed very differently, as the imperfect union of two mathematically complementary ideas, or as the fundamentally flawed union of philosophically incompatible ideas. Fisher enjoyed some philosophical advantage, while Neyman and Pearson employed the more rigorous mathematics. Hypothesis testing is controversial among some users, but the most popular alternative is based on the same mathematics. The history of the development left testing without a single citable authoritative source for the hybrid theory that reflects common statistical practice. The merge terminology is also somewhat inconsistent. There is strong empirical evidence that the graduates of an introductory statistics class have a weak understanding of the meaning of hypothesis. Testing. Summary The interpretation of probability has not been resolved. Neither test method has been rejected. Both are heavily used for different purposes. Texts have merged the two test methods under the term hypothesis testing. Mathematicians claim that that significance tests are a special case of hypothesis tests. Others treat the problems and methods as distinct. 
The dispute has adversely affected statistical education. Bayesian inference versus frequentist inference. Two different interpretations of probability have long existed. Gauss and Laplace could have debated alternatives more than 200 years ago. Two competing schools of statistics have developed as a consequence. Classical inferential statistics was largely developed in the second quarter of the 20th century, much of it in reaction to the probability of the time which utilized the controversial principle of indifference to establish prior probabilities. The rehabilitation of Bayesian inference was a reaction to the limitations of frequentist probability. More reactions followed. While the philosophical interpretations are old, the statistical terminology is not. The current statistical terms Bayesian and frequentist were stabilized in the second half of the 20th century. The terminology is confusing. The classical interpretation of probability is Bayesian while classical statistics is frequentist. Frequentist also has varying interpretations, different in philosophy than in physics. The nuances of philosophical probability interpretations are discussed elsewhere. In statistics the alternative interpretations enable the analysis of different data using different methods based on different models to achieve slightly different goals. Any statistical comparison of the competing schools considers pragmatic criteria beyond philosophical. Major contributors Two major contributors to frequentist methods were Fisher and Neyman. Fisher's interpretation of probability was idiosyncratic. Neyman's views were rigorously frequentist. Three major contributors to 20th century Bayesian statistical philosophy, mathematics and methods were De Finetti, Jeffries and Savage. Savage popularized De Finetti's ideas in the English-speaking world and made Bayesian mathematics rigorous. In 1965, Dennis Lindley's two-volume work, Introduction to Probability and Statistics from a Bayesian Viewpoint, brought Bayesian methods to a wide audience. Statistics has advanced over the past three generations. The authoritative views of the early contributors are not all current. Contrasting approaches frequentist inference frequentist inference is partially and tersely described above in. Frequentist inference combines several different views. The result is capable of supporting scientific conclusions making operational decisions and estimating parameters with or without confidence intervals. Frequentist inference is based solely on the evidence. Bayesian inference A classical frequency distribution describes the probability of the data. The use of Bayes' theorem allows a more abstract concept, the probability of a hypothesis given the data. The concept was once known as inverse probability. Bayesian inference updates the probability estimate for a hypothesis as additional evidence is acquired. Bayesian inference is explicitly based on the evidence in prior opinion, which allows it to be based on multiple sets of evidence. Comparisons of characteristics Frequentists and Bayesians use different models of probability. Frequentists often consider parameters to be fixed but unknown while Bayesians assign probability distributions to similar parameters. Consequently Bayesians speak of probabilities that don't exist for frequentists. A Bayesian speaks of the probability of a theory while a true frequentist can speak only of the consistency of the evidence with the theory. Example, a frequentist does not say that there is a 95% probability that the true value of a parameter lies within a confidence interval, saying instead that 95% of confidence intervals contain the true value. Mathematical results Neither school is immune from mathematical criticism and neither accepts it without a struggle. Stein's paradox illustrated that finding a flat or uninformative prior probability distribution in high dimensions is subtle. Bayesians regard that as peripheral to the core of their philosophy while finding frequentism to be riddled with inconsistencies. Paradoxes and bad mathematical behavior. Frequentists can explain most. 
Some of the bad examples are extreme situations, such as estimating the weight of a herd of elephants from measuring the weight of one, which allows no statistical estimate of the variability of weights. The likelihood principle has been a battleground. Statistical results Both schools have achieved impressive results in solving real-world problems. Classical statistics effectively has the longer record because numerous results were obtained with mechanical calculators and printed tables of special statistical functions. Bayesian methods have been highly successful in the analysis of information that is naturally sequentially sampled. Many Bayesian methods and some recent frequentist methods require the computational power widely available only in the last several decades. There is hint that Bayesian philosophy is book smart compared to frequentist street smarts. Bayesian philosophy has sometimes been silent on shuffling the cards. The design of experiments teaches the importance of the source of statistical data. Fisher was a major contributor to the theory. There is active discussion about combining Bayesian and frequentist methods. But reservations are expressed about the meaning of the results and reducing the diversity of approaches. Philosophical results Bayesians are united in opposition to the limitations of frequentism, but are philosophically divided into numerous camps, each with a different emphasis. One philosopher of statistics has noted a retreat from the statistical field to philosophical probability interpretations over the last two generations. There is a perception that successes in Bayesian applications do not justify the supporting philosophy. Bayesian methods often create useful models that are not used for traditional inference and which owe little to philosophy. None of the philosophical interpretations of probability appears robust. The frequentist view to too rigid and limiting while the Bayesian view can be simultaneously objective and subjective, etc. Illustrative quotations carefully used. The frequentist approach yields broadly applicable if sometimes clumsy answers. To insist on unbiased frequentist techniques may lead to negative estimates of a variance. The use of p-values in multiple tests may lead to Blatant contradictions, conventional 0.95 confidence regions may actually consist of the whole real line. No wonder that mathematicians find it often difficult to believe that conventional statistical methods are a branch of mathematics. Bayesianism is a neat and fully principled philosophy, while frequentism is a grab bag of opportunistic, individually optimal methods. In multi-parameter problems flat priors can yield very bad answers. Bayes' rule says there is a simple, elegant way to combine current information with prior experience in order to state how much is known. It implies that sufficiently good data will bring previously disparate observers to agreement. It makes full use of available information, and it produces decisions having the least possible error rate. Bayesian statistics is about making probability statements. Frequentist statistics is about evaluating probability statements. S. Statisticians are often put in a setting reminiscent of Arrow's paradox, where we are asked to provide estimates that are informative and unbiased and confidence statements that are correct conditional on the data and also on the underlying true parameter. Formal inferential aspects are often a relatively small part of statistical analysis. The two philosophies, Bayesian and frequentist, are more orthogonal than antithetical. Summary Bayesian theory has a mathematical advantage. Frequentist probability has existence and consistency problems, but finding good priors to apply Bayesian theory remains difficult. Both theories have impressive records of successful application. Neither supporting philosophical interpretation of probability is robust. There is increasing skepticism of the connection between application and philosophy. Some statisticians are recommending active collaboration.